Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be looking at another feature of your phone that is going to be the accelerometer. That's the only one we haven't covered really um, thus far. So we're going to go right into covering this, but first let me just tell you that I am back home. Finally I've got my setup. Hopefully the audio is a little bit better. Um, here's my mess. Here's my lamp with this stupid thing. I'm back home. Yes. So that means more video more frequently. So we're going to go right in. I've got my device right here plugged in with uh, my USB cable. And we're going to be using Unity Remote to actually test out our stuff in the game. So if I just swap over to the scene, um, we have this over here. It's basically just a, a empty scene. So it's basically just art. Uh, we've got some water going on and also some kind of cube shape here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sphere. So a 3D object is sphere and I'll add a rigid body to it. What I'll want to be doing um, in the end is actually use the accelerometer to add force to this thing and try to keep it still on the actual uh, board here, basically. One way to do that would be to use the accelerometer. So if you're not really familiar with it, let me give you a brief explanation of what the accelerometer is. Um, you've got your phone, if I just go back here, you've got your phone here, and inside of it there's some kind of device that tells you what is the real world orientation of your phone. So is it tilted that way, that way, that way? It's like, it's, it tells you exactly how your phone is in the real world. Uh, you can pair this with the Garo scope to just get some awesome result. Today I'm only going to be showing you what you can do with the um, accelerometer. You do have a video on the channel here that talks about the gyroscope if you want to go and see that. So to get started I am going to right click anywhere and I actually create a new script not show an explorer. So this script is going to be called accelerometer. Hopefully I typed that right. And we're going to open it up inside of Visual Studio. Now the way you actually access this real world orientation I was talking about is through a vector tree property that they have set up inside of the, um, they actually have it set up inside of the input class. You can simply type in, um, in any function, you go like input acceleration and that's, that's the flow, that's actually the uh, vector tree you need. Sorry about my phone. So what I'll be doing here is I'll actually create a small script for the mechanic around it really quickly. I'll do a private rigid body, rigid, and we'll go get the rigid body on the ball. So rigid is equal to get component rigid body. Now, of course, none of this is actually, we're not using the accelerometer just yet, um, but we're going to be doing that right here in the update. So in my update, I'll actually just want to try and move my rigid body using the force of the acceleration. So depending on how my phone is tilted, I'll just add this force to the ball. So rigid, add force. Let's do a regular add force and we'll do input acceleration. Now we'll actually give this a try in the game and you'll see why it might not be the best idea to do it uh, like this just yet. But we're going to go on our sphere, add the accelerometer to it. And I'm going to go on my phone really quickly just so I can actually pull out the, uh, the Unity remote. So I've got the Unity remote running right here on my phone. I don't know if you can see it, that's the application. And um, just to make sure, we're going to go under File, and what is it again? File, Project Settings, Editor. And make sure that your device right here is set on any Android device, if you're using the remote, just like me. Um, if, of course, there is no accelerometer on your computer, so if you're doing that for a computer game, that's kind of pointless, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to hit play right now. I actually launched this. Hopefully, it actually shows in my phone as well. And it does, so I can see it on my phone and the ball is actually moving. However, what happens right here, and I'm going to actually show you the documentation page that goes with it, is that um, it's it's based off the Unity axis, which is what we want, but it's also based off if you are using your phone in front of you. So here it is. We are respecting the same exact coordinate as in Unity. As you can tell, the Y axis is the up and down. Uh, you've got X on the left and right and Z in the back and front. However, this is assuming your, your uh, device is actually in front of you. In our case, if we want to balance our thing out on that board, uh, we have to imagine that our phone is not in front of us, so it's not actually like this. It would be on the table, just like that. So to do that, we have to actually flip the acceleration input first. So let's go back inside of the game, and I will quickly flip this vector 3. So if we do want to have this flat on the actual desk, on a table, whatever, um, what I'm going to do here is declare a new boolean at the top. So public boolean is flat. And let's assume that it is in this case. So by default, I'll be setting my boolean to true. And we're going to declare a new vector3 right here, which is going to be the tilt of our phone. 
it's equal to input acceleration and let's actually modify our add force by the tilt. Now at this point all we have to do is the operation to rotate that vector um, downward. Right now if we just hold our phone directly on the table it's going to be pointing, um, well if we just leave it on a table like this it's going to be actually tilting towards a direction. We want to be able to have that direction pointing downward. So we'll actually type in something here. If it is flat then we're going to apply the modification by rotating our um, our actual vector 3 right here by doing a quaternion Euler. Let's take the angle 90 degrees, 0, 0, and then do times the tilt. This way we're going to be rotating our vector 90 degrees in X. And um, that's pretty much all we need here. Now, of course, this might confuse a lot of people because quaternion are not as easy to understand, but this is how we rotate um, if you just want to rotate a vector like this, super quick, super fast, simple, you're going to be using quaternion and then just put your angle, the one you actually input in Unity Inspector, and then you do times your actual vector. This way you can rotate it. Now to actually show this a little bit better, I'm going to do a debug draw array so we can look at um, this vector in the game. So I'm actually going to put this vector right on top of the sphere. Let's do transform dot position plus vector three dot up. This way it's always going to be on top of the sphere and we're going to add the tilt here. Also we can change the color for say cyan or green or whatever you want just to have a better look at it. So right now in the real world I have my Unity remote open. I'm going to leave it on my desk. So it's flat on my desk and there is a slight there is a slight angle on my desk so um, yeah I might need to fix that one day but basically if I just take it in my hand now and I tilt it towards the left I can get my movement, let's do that on the right now so it doesn't fall, tilt it forward a bit, backward, and I can just play with these in the game using my phone. And it's now pointing downwards, so if I just put it back on my desk, as you can tell, it's now flat again. Kind of flat. And that's actually all you need to make this work. It's a simple mechanic, it's a simple, um, simple device on your phone, and most of the phone have them now, so you can actually do that pretty much on any Android game you wish. And we're also using this mechanic inside of the Glide tutorial, so if you haven't like checked out the Glide tutorial yet, you should, you should, because it's uh, a cool game, a really cool and small game, where we polish the menu a lot, and we have some simple gameplay mechanics, so if you want to actually have a look at this, it's not that long, it's about 2,000 lines of code, and you get a decent game out of it. So guys, thank you so much for watching, I will catch you very, very soon now that I'm back home, we have the opportunities to make so much more videos, and start streaming again. Again guys, thank you so much and I will see you later.